colleagues, we're now on 37. Public hearing for the city manager's proposed fiscal year 2024-2025 uh, budget and fiscal year 2025-2030 capital improvement plan, CIP. All right, at this time, we'll hear from staff. All right, good evening, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Members of Council, I'm JJ Scott, Assistant Director for Budget and CIP in the Budget and Management Services Department. This agenda item is to conduct a public hearing to receive comments regarding the City Manager's proposed fiscal year 2024-25 budget and fiscal year 2025-2030 capital improvement plan. All public hearing requirements have been fulfilled. All right. We've heard the staff report. Colleagues, are there any questions before we move into it? All right, at this time, I will now declare the public hearing open. Yeah, I'll start online. Madam Clerk, I'm going to start online. And the first person I have is John Wagstaff. This is John. And one moment. Mr. Wagstaff, can you hear me? I can. All right, welcome. You, uh, you're speaking on number 37, the budget. You have two minutes. Thank you. Good evening. I spoke at the last public budget hearing about the need to prioritize public safety pay and staffing in the budget. I now come before you again to echo the importance of increased pay for city employees, but tonight I speak solely as a taxpayer, one who you will soon be losing. $5,873.57, my total assessed property tax in 2023 for a 1,000 square foot home and two vehicles. A cost burden amounting to three of my paychecks, a month and a half of work as a city employee, assuming no personal contributions to my 401k. My home value is less than the average home price in Durham. While a believer that police officers should live in the communities they serve, I regret that I will be buying a home outside of Durham. It would be irresponsible of me to start a family in a city where the basics are not covered. I applaud the city for some of its endeavors, funding reentry programs, public art, and the expansion of bike lanes. But frankly, none of that matters like the mayor covered tonight when people are getting shot in the streets. Nor to anyone across economic lines who have, the, have to anxiously wait for their 911 call to be answered or an ambulance to be available, call out of work to either take their kid to school or remain at home through a school closure, Wonder if their garbage is going to be collected. Have to deal with their property being stolen only to be told by the police that they're not going to investigate it due to staffing or can't enjoy parks like Long Meadow because it's controlled by drug dealers and littered with trash. Public safety is a ticking time bomb in the city and there's still rhetoric from some counselors about reappropriating officer positions that are vacant. Mind you, the officer to citizen ratio of even a fully staffed department lags decades. Yes, I'm moving to one of those suburbs that everyone complains about but I'm gonna be taxed less, provided more, and not con contributing financially to a city with mismatched priorities. Please reevaluate tax increase for this burden and your bonds to fund normal stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Next I have Seth, Seth, Hur Seth Hurley. Next, I have DeWarren Langley. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, City Manager, and members of the Durham City Council. I want to first start by having a moment of silence as we recently this evening had one of our citizens, Javon Jantavia Day. She was a 21-year-old young lady who was shot 
on guest road. She succumbed to her injury, so I just want to take a moment of silence for her and other gun, vi gun violence victims in the city of Durham. Now I want to move on to a uh, question that was raised to our police chief last week by Councilwoman Cook, and our police chief responded when asking how can we curtail the violence in our community. She said, we recognize that our kids and some of the most affected are not exposed to a world that shows them that they can be better and be in a better place than they currently are. They will turn around and potentially be our next victims or grow up to be offenders in our society. Again, I am coming before this council asking for an investment of $25,000 to support the impactful transformational work of the Charles Hamilton Houston Foundation, where we provide vital career exploration and development programming for boys and young men of color in Durham. This group faces significant challenges, including low academic proficiency, poor college and career readiness, high suspension and dropout rates, limited access to sustainable careers, and elevated involvement in gang violence and juvenile detention. We can change this. Our programs aim to address these disparities through skill, focused mentoring, academic enrichment, and leadership development. Your investment will help us expand our reach, enhance our resources, and build long-term sustainability. Participants in our program gain skills, resources, and support necessary for academic success and career achievement. That is how you deter gun violence in this community, by giving our young people, particularly our boys and young men of color, a possibility in the future. Thank Your you. funding will be transformative. Please make this investment. Thank you. Next, I have Molly Flo. Molly, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Welcome. You have two minutes. Thank you. Um, I just want to express my appreciation to the council and the city staff for the transportation um, priorities in the proposed budget. Um, I live between Duke and Gregson streets um, and have watched the traffic be scary for years. And in the last few years, it's gotten much more frightening. Um, and so I, I appreciate the um, priorities in the CIP and in the transportation requests. And I want to urge you all to um, to approve those transportation priorities. Um, also appreciate your efforts on Vision Zero um, and the um, putting an importance on the streets and sidewalks in the upcoming bonds or the bond proposal. Um, and then I want to just add that I would urge, urge all of you to do anything that you can to accelerate um, projects that make our streets safer for, for not, not just for drivers, but especially for pedestrians, bikers, transit users. Um, we really need our streets to be safer sooner. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. And I have Margaret Chapman. Hi, can you hear me? I can, welcome, you have two minutes. Thank you so much. Um, I, I wanna echo what Molly said um, and thank you for the work you've done um, on trying to reduce um, accidents and fatalities on our roads. Um, and again, echo what Molly said that it's really important for this budget to work as quickly as possible to try to put in design solutions, which will um, keep people safe on our streets. And in particular, I'm uh, thinking about um, turning both Mangum and Roxborough back into two-way streets um, and uh, Gregson and Duke into two-way streets. Um, I live right next to Gregson and I've seen three times in the last nine years how uh, cars go into houses, um, which is really scary. And it makes it harder for people to feel safe um, even in their homes because of the traffic design. So I wanna thank you for the work that you've done for this. And I wanna just push you to move as fast as possible. Thanks. Thank you. Those are all of my online speakers. I'm going to repeat, if you are signing up online, you need to be online. If you're signing up in person, please be in person. If you do both, you're taking up a space for someone else. So uh, I'd ask the public to please try your best to uh, hold to whichever method 
I know things happen, but we want to make sure we engage as many people as possible. All right, we'll now move to in person. And I'll call up in, uh, I'll call up a few at a time. Uh, the first person I have is, and I'm going to ask that you say your name when you get to the podium because it's really hard to breathe sometimes. Um, Virginia Wortman. Wortman or Vertman. Uh, James Chavis. Let's see, Mr. Chavis. Oh, there he is. Sarita Hill. And Ali Khorasani. Welcome. Hi, my name is Virginia, and I'm here tonight as a resident of Durham to speak on behalf of the solid waste workers and the fact that they are not currently being served well enough with the pay program that is being implemented in this budget. It does not represent the cost of living in Durham. $19 an hour is not going to keep you housed in Durham. That is way more than people will be able to afford on a percentage of childcare, on a percentage of food, on a percentage of rent, let's be honest here, rent is mostly what it's going to. Solid waste workers are an incredibly precious public health role. They work in physically strenuous conditions. They operate heavy machinery. Everything they do contributes to the well-being and safety and health of our city. But within the general step plan, they represent a huge portion of the people that are within the general step plan, but they only represent 30% of the raise. Where's, why are they not being funded appropriately? Why are they not being given enough money to survive? Which would be, again, in Durham, $27 an hour. $27 an hour across the board for everyone would be a survivable wage. And if we can't fund that from our budget, we must ask ourselves, what other sources can we go to? Possibly the massive universities that have large parcels of land here tax-free and have billion, multi-billion dollar endowments. Possibly people from the county that are in RTP that are taking up land, again, tax-free, incentivized, mostly out-of-state corporations. How can we roll that money from the county that should be coming in, wrangle that back into our budget so we have affordable housing, so we can pay our workers appropriately? I understand that there's a division between city and county, and I understand that that may not necessarily be within your jurisdiction but I urge you to seek out other forms of revenue that put pressure on the massive corporations driving up the price of housing here. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. My name is James Chavis. I come to you talking about the budget for 24 until 25. The mayor, city council members, Y'all do not believe that they are not helping to push inside promotion with the citizens that's working here in Durham. Your thing is letting the outsiders come here in Durham and take over the jobs and give them higher wages than the people that's already here. That's a shame. Maybe you know and maybe you don't. But what I want you to do is go do me a kind favor and check to see if I'm lying. Because if I'm lying, I want you to come to me and tell me to my face. Don't tell me behind my back. For example, Wade, he came here in 22, making, okay, a hundred and forty-seven thousand and two thousand and twenty-two. Ask how much he makes now. They will not let you know. Okay, it's going to be public record. That's in 2022. Okay, then come his assistant, but we don't know whether he is a, she's his assistant, Mary. Mary came in here as the assistant to the director. Sorry, a new person from outside again, not a darn resident, not a city employee but an outside employee, making top wages more than others. Her wages, okay, in 2022, 
$72,000. Ask her how much she makes now. This Thank is you what very much, Mr. Chavis. we are facing. Thank you. Okay. Do you want to let him know that all salaries are public? Any information he's provided. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor Williams, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members, and Manager Page. My name is Sarita Hill, and I serve as the Executive Director of Step Up Durham. Since opening our doors in 2015, we have served over 1,000 individuals with close to half identifying as justice involved. In 2022, Step Up Durham served as the administrator for the city's guaranteed income pilot. We provided 109 formerly incarcerated individuals with $600 per month for one year. I am here to endorse additional funding earmarked to support the next iteration of guaranteed income and share that Step Up Durham is open into partnering with the city on this program when we hear more specifics about the administrator's role and the operational support that will be provided. One of every four adults in North Carolina has a criminal record. As you know, with the record comes collateral consequences, limiting individuals from accessing basic needs like housing, food security, and employment. The average annual income for the 109 served in the guaranteed income pilot was $8,000 for women and $18,000 for men. With the extra $7,200 no strings attached support, pilot participants were able to invest in their own business and in continuing education, providing opportunities to contribute to and share in Durham's economic prosperity. The state recidivism rate is 40 to 49%. That means up to half of 40 of formerly incarcerated individuals return to incarceration within the first three years of coming home. For our 109 pilot pilot participants, the recidivism rate was 1.8%. When individuals have access to the resources they need, they make different choices, which makes communities safer. When we launched our pilot, we were one of two cities in the country serving formerly incarcerated individuals. Since the launch, I've spoken with cities across the country who see the value in the work we are able to accomplish. Our support to help our neighbors achieve stability will further all the goals we are striving towards as a city. Thank you for allowing me to share my thoughts in support of additional funding for guaranteed income. We look forward to hearing specific next steps directly from the city and exploring a continued partnership. Thank you. Thank you. Step up. Mayor Williams, uh, members of the council, my name is Ali Khorasani, and I'm here to read three postcards out of 75 that. Uh, from Durham residents that couldn't be here tonight, but wrote to the council in support of the Guaranteed Income Program. They are all in support of adding $200,000 to the Guaranteed Income Program, GI Program. The $200,000 will cover Step Up's operating costs and allow them to increase the number of participants by 40%. <clears throat> One person wrote, I was once incarcerated and I joined the Step Up launch. It changed things for me. I got my first car and apartment with their help. I was able to pay for a person that expunged my records. Now I'm in school and have a better job. I feel better about life and my son is happy and thriving. Another person wrote, my brother is formerly incarcerated and exploited by his employer. My mom and I carry the financial burden to keep him housed. All of us are affected and unable to achieve financial security. My opportunities are affected. I urge you to vote for an expanded GI program. My family would be able to survive. Another person wrote, a few years ago, I had a meal at a loved one's apartment and learned he loved astronomy and chess. He's finally gotten a small, now discontinued housing grant. In the few years before getting housing, I'd pick them up from the Durham County Jail, Orange County Jail, and three area hospitals no less than 10 times. He's always ended up in those places after sleeping or being drunk in public, never for one single other criminal offense. Please increase GI's budget to $1.2 million so that more of our loved ones have more opportunity to access the safety and sleep that everyone in this city deserves. <laughs> Along with these three postcards I read from people who wrote to, uh, wrote to you, I urge you to add $200,000 to the Guaranteed Income Program so that the currently budgeted, budgeted $1 million can, go, can all go towards the direct cash payments to justice-involved participants. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Uh, next, I have Katarina Heitman, uh, Michael Owens, Christopher Powell, Cedric Craig, and Allison Simpson. Welcome. Good, e oh, all good? <laughs> good evening, council members. My name is Catalina Heitman. I am a proud Dermite, an immigrant, and the proud sister of a formerly incarcerated man. 
That is why I'm also here today to read two of the 75 postcards in support of increasing the funding for the Guaranteed Income Program by 200,000 in this year's budget. One person wrote, I have a brother locked up for a crime he did not commit. There's nothing we can do, but guaranteed income will make it a bit easier for him to survive when he gets out. He went to Morehouse. Wrong place, wrong time. Nonetheless, he deserves the chance. Another person wrote, I have thoroughly reviewed the request from Durham for All. As I know, there are many things to consider in this upcoming budget. I stand in support of the guaranteed income 1.2 million ask. I trust Step Up in the work they are capable of. This aid can financially support individuals in the few extra dollars needed for groceries and that little extra needed for rent and utilities. While persons might be going through some life transition, they need this. Furthermore, during my time as a recipient of the Step Up program, this could have been a great aid. Please take the time to read the rest of the 75 postcards that Durham residents took the time to write to you. I will be passing them to the city clerk. All of us, along with the 599 people who have signed our petition, are hoping you add 200,000 to the guaranteed income program so that step ups operating costs are covered and the current 1 million can actually all go towards direct cash payments to 140 to 150 potential participants. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Next I have Michael Owens. Welcome. <clears throat> Good evening, council members. Thank you for allowing me time to speak. It's an honor and a privilege. I know deep in my heart that guaranteed income is a lifeline offering hope and dignity to people in our communities. It is more than just financial support. It is a chance for struggling formerly incarcerated people to breathe easier, to dream again, and to rebuild their lives with the security we all deserve. I am the founder of an organization called Clothes for Those, dedicated to providing clothes to the homeless, churches, and those in need. I encountered a homeless man on the roadside, his story profound as an ocean and intricate as a grand architecture. Released from jail, he came back to a life void of everything. He had nothing but himself. Compounding his pain, his beloved wife was in a serious car accident, needing extensive medical attention, which could have been funded by GI. In his pain, he remained composed, dreaming of a broader future. His, his unwavering faith kept him steady. He wanted his story to be told, but he couldn't fit all that on a cardboard sign. His story hit home for me too, for I've had family face medical challenges. Now I stand here blessed with empathy. I'm compelled to push for change, driven by that shared longing for security. Just as a sunflower turns its face to the sun, so should we turn our face to formerly incarcerated people. Just as God gives us second chances, let's extend that grace to others. This organization stands for everyone, from the incarcerated to the perfect man. But who among us is truly perfect? None. That's why in lifting each other, we find redemption and humanity within ourselves. I urge your esteemed council to continue to take action. Please increase the GI program funds by $200,000 this year for step ups operations, allowing the current $1 million to directly support justice-involved individuals. Thank you. Next, I have uh, Christopher Powell. Good evening, members of the council and Mayor Williams. My name is Christopher. I was a formerly incarcerated individual who served 40 years for the crime of murder. I'm here tonight in support of adding the $200,000 to step up operation costs because it'll help us in order to get better housing for individuals coming out, better training, and even better jobs for the former because those are the main issues that face everybody in, that's formerly incarcerated. And due to my present condition, if I would have had access to guaranteed income, I would have been able to help my sister at times when the emergency arose, but mom when emergency arose, but as of now, I'm working two jobs, 
and it's getting hard, but I'm struggling. I'm still here to make it. Thank you for your time. All right. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor William, the account and council members. I'm here tonight. I'm sorry, my name's uh, Cedric. I'm an organizer with Durham for All. I'm here tonight on behalf of hundreds of Durham residents and Durham for All members whose strong support step up endorsement for additional funding for the Guaranteed Income Program. In the past three months, 600 people have signed our petition or written postcards of support, and over 70 people have participated in our campaign events. This, this is a collective call to action for the council coming from a diverse community of Durhamites that are, e that are either directly or indirectly impacted by incarceration, as you've heard tonight and back on May 20th. The call for an extra $2,000 was originally derived from three considerations. First, through discussions with Step Up about their uh, programmatic financial needs and their desire to serve more folks in the Guaranteed Income Program if the city contract with them again. Second, as a result of input with hundreds of Durham residents that support the city's initiative and want to see the current $1 million be applied exclusively to the RECAP payments, which will result in more participants in the program itself. And lastly, with a consideration of all the budgetary constraints and competing priorities that the council is facing in this year's budget. We applaud the council for imagining the privately raised $1 million that was allocated in the first year and with an equal $1 million in public funds being secured for the second year. We know that our, we know that you share our commitment to shared economic prosperity in Durham and a desire to see the uh, program grow in size and eventually scope. Given the variety of economic challenges that our returning residents are facing due, due to systemic barriers to accessing basic needs and definitely trying to make ends meet in an increasingly more expensive city, this council has an opportunity to help dozens of additional justice involved folks as they strive to rebuild their lives. For all these reasons, we urge you to increase the program's funding in order to cover the operating costs of the, of the, excuse me, of the administering organization and for the current $1 million to all go to the red cap payments of program participants. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. My name is Allison Simpson. Um, I'm here to thank you and express appreciation for passing the Vision Zero resolution. Uh, you have no idea how much this means to me as my husband, Matt, was killed riding his bike while we were riding home with our children from the Museum of Life and Science. And thank you so much for including fare free transit, funding for the transportation department's full slate of requests, including the guest road trail crossing where my husband was killed, and expediting project delivery to make our streets safe and accessible for everyone in the proposed budget. Now I urge you to please approve these proposed budget items as they are some of the steps we need to get us to zero deaths and serious injuries from traffic violence. Traffic violence is an urgent public safety issue. It not only impacted my family, but we have had three hit and run killings of people in our community walking or biking in just the last month, four since the beginning of 2024. Jerry Evans, Armstrong, Timothy Wright, Philip Farrington, and Frederick. Powell, this is not okay. My heart breaks for their families and loved ones, and I will continue to advocate to make our streets safer for everyone. We owe it to them, anyone who has lost someone, to, who has been impacted by traffic violence and to our entire community. I want Matt and my children to grow up feeling safe walking and biking. I also ask that the budget support housing and education and ensures that all of those who work for our city can actually live in the city. Thank you so much. All right, next I have Jason Davis, Sarah D'Amato, Shanice Hamilton, Chris Benjamin, and Rob Wilkinson. Wilkinson. Good evening, Manager Page, Mayor Williams, Mayor Pro Tem, Middleton, Councilmember Freeman, Caballero, Rist, Baker, and Cook. My name is Jason Davis, President of the Professional Firefighters of Durham, and I represent 262 professional firefighters in Durham. I stand here before you tonight in support of the proposed pay increases for the firefighters. There have been countless emails, calls, text messages, and meetings over the last 18 to 20 months. We hope that through this process, you have found that our local does its homework. As Mayor Pro Tem Middleton stated a few meetings ago, 
we did do a pay study ourselves. And we brought those numbers to you and sent those to you in emails and they all aligned with what was brought to you in the study. Um, we were even able to get you the Charlotte numbers that the study wasn't able to produce. With that being said, we wanna make sure that we are part of the implementation process because nobody is gonna take care of us like us. Thank you. Good evening, City Council. Sarah D'Amato, Project Director of Legal Aid's Eviction Diversion Program. I wanna thank y'all for including us in your budget and ask again that you continue to fund us. Um, we've heard a discussion about gun violence and I want to reference a 2021 study out of Rutgers that examined gun violence and eviction. And one study from 2020 found that the risk of violent crime spiked immediately after an eviction. Another study found that communities that had strong social support for including for housing insecurity did not necessarily have a higher risk, although those communities experienced strain. Today, in district court and small claims court in Durham, there were 80 cases for eviction on today. In cases where legal aid was involved, there were no judgments entered. That means the people that were here today represented by us got to stay in their houses for at least another 10 days, at least another month. There are still 200 other cases on the docket for this week alone in Durham. If they do not have representation, those people are going to be at risk of being padlocked in two weeks. And if we tie that back to that study that shows that the risk of high, uh, violent crime spikes after that, we're looking at here in the summer, families in the streets not having access to their community, schools, to their healthcare programs, all of these things which we know also decrease the risk of violent crime. Communities that have lower evictions are more stable. Communities that are stable have lower violent crime. I also want to say that there are some things that are not out of the that are out of the control of many tenants. I just learned today that there's sophisticated software that from some office outside is totally uh, you know influencing rents and they don't have they don't know what's going on in our community. So I just ask that you continue to fund our program. Thank you. How are you doing? Uh, my name is Shanice Hamilton, um, and not gonna take up a lot of your time. Um, we know why we're here. We've been here time and time again, asking for our city workers, which are majority of black and brown people in this community, to receive a livable wage of at least $25 an hour. And I say at least because we've run the numbers, uh, and we know with the high cost of inflation and barely being able to get approved for, um, apartments or housing, let alone actually being able to afford the rent, um, that our city workers actually deserve way more. 25 is like the bare minimum. Um, and in the current budget proposal, we didn't even get that. Um, it went from the current rate of $18.46 um, an hour to the proposed rate of 19.58, and that's like a dollar and 12 difference an hour. And our people are worth so much more than that. Uh, our most essential workers that make up around 42% of the city workforce are still not receiving the wages that they need to be able to fully live and enjoy the city that they're giving their all to. Um, it's been said time and time again that Durham is dope and Durham is dope. Durham is like crazy dope. They did, and Durham has done an amazing job like raising me and I'm grateful that I get to raise my son here in Durham now. Um, but it's because of the people in the city that come together, that take care of each other and have become chosen family for each other and stand in for each other that makes this city so dope. The soul of the people is what makes the city so dope and how we show up for one another. So we're gonna to continue to come together and fight for what we deserve. And while we're still going to fight for living wages for our city workers, we're also demanding that our solid waste workers are reclassified or upgraded to maintenance specialist seniors. Uh, and this conversation around the budget needs to continue and it's far from over. We're hosting a community forum this Saturday and grateful to have some of you from council that are gonna be there with community to have this conversation with us. Um, and we need to talk about the budget, the resources and so much more and keep this, this conversation going. Thank you very much. How are you doing? 
Chris Benjamin, I want to thank everybody on the panel all in here. Nine months ago, um, seems like a long time, but it really hasn't been a long time, not for uh, the solid waste workers. All we wanted to be was uh, respected, accepted, and recognized. That's all. And we wanted a few dollars. That's all we wanted. And that uh, being said, 95% uh, of our uh, CDL drivers, we uh, wanted our title to be changed because we drive multiple trucks on any given day. However, it hasn't, you know, took place. Uh, so we're, you know, maintenance 80s. We want to be seniors or heavy equipment operators. So that's what we want to. So we're still in the fight for that. Coming from a place of gratitude, um, think back in nine months, nothing hasn't changed. We still pick up everybody. We still service everybody. You guys haven't been complaining. Your trash is getting picked up daily. Even when we was out for six days, we had two weeks of uh, trash out there. We got it up in three days. You tell me, I tell you, ain't nothing stopped. We still rolling. And that being said, in the last, uh, there's 12 months in a year, everybody get recognized. We haven't been recognized none. You got Black History Month, you got Pride Month, you got this, that, and the third. We still haven't got one day just to get recognized as sanitation workers or police officers or the firefighters. So where's that respect at? We don't even get that respect. So I just want us to, you know, um, be mindful when you see us. That's it. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Robert Wilkerson. Um, first off, we recognize and appreciate that there's a significant amount of money on the table for raises this year, around $28 million. However, the majority of the money continues to go to police and the management, not the city's lowest wage workers and hardest workers. We have met with you all a few times over the past couple of months and have discussed our concerns and see little movement in our direction. The universal living wage ordinance is structured in a problematic formula. As I discussed that at the last hearing, we look forward to working with you all to improve that in the coming year a minimum wage of $19.58 does not make ends meet and earn with the cost of housing and the cost of food. You can't raise a family on that. Even single adults struggle getting back with that pay. However, the one thing we still hope you will find the courage to change in this year's budget is to make solid wage workers whole. They are the, the department that took a major stand last September to show us all how serious these pay and equity issues are. The right thing to do is properly classify solid waste workers. Solid waste is the only department where workers with the Class A CDL and other endorsements with the skills to drive several pieces of heavy machinery and who act like crew chiefs reporting and documenting their work are not paid as maintenance specialist seniors. As a result, solid waste continues to be the lowest paid department with less pathways for career development than other departments. It's time for the city to fix this, reclassify solid waste employees. We look forward to working with you on these important issues. Um, secondly, Mayor, um, speaking on your crime problem, um, these people that's here today for the um, GI funds, um, I believe in that program. As a formerly incarcerated individual that spent 15 years. Thank you. Um, it's worth it. Thank you. Uh, All right. Next, I have Mary Rose Fontana, Gregory Williams, Meredith Carter, Nathan Lee, Stella Adams.
Hello, my name is Mary Rose Fontana. Thank you, Mary, Mayor William and City Council for allowing me to speak today. Uh, I'm here thanking the city, council, or city Manager and Council for including these three requests and the proposed budget, maintaining fare free transit, funding the Transportation Department's full slate of requests, and expediting project delivery. In combination with the proposed bond referendum, these budget items will help Durham achieve the goals outlined in the Vision Zero resolution to reduce transportation-related deaths and serious injuries by 50% by 2035 and by 100% by 2045. I urge you to approve the budget with the aforementioned proposed items. Thank you so much for listening to the needs of your citizens and prioritizing our safety. Welcome. Good evening. Um, thank you all for having me. I'm Gregory Williams, the advocacy campaign organizer here at Bike Durham. I'd like to thank you, Mr. Mayor and esteemed council members. Um, you've done some great work, but tonight I'd like to mention Frederick Howell, Timothy Wayne Wright, and Philip Farrington. These are the names of the three Durham residents who lost their lives in hit and run incidents in the past month. So far, this council has proven to be invested in our Vision Zero ideals, and this is reflected in the budget and with the hiring of Lauren Grove, the sidewalks and streets, ref and the sidewalks and streets referendum bond. However, we urge you to keep proving, or excuse me, keep pushing, approve these budget items, and continue your hard work to expedite infrastructure project delivery. We are on the right track, but every delay can prove to be deadly. I know you all recognize and honor this because it shows in the work you do, so thank you for that. And thank you to your commitment to fare free transit and its um, appearance in the budget. We really appreciate that. And lastly, we'd like to support guaranteed income funds increase of $200,000 to cover step ups operating costs and to support our city staff and educator pay. Thank you. Council members, Mayor Williams and Manager Page. My name is Meredith Carter and I'm a firefighter here with the city of Durham. I'm speaking to you tonight on behalf of local 668 professional firefighters of Durham, representing 262 of your professional firefighters. I am now in my sixth year of service and I am compensated at a rate of $16.59 per hour, almost $2 below the current Durham minimum livable wage of $18.46 per hour. Thankfully, this should be the last time you have to hear me say that. Because in July, if the compensation plan is approved as it has been presented by Manager Page, I, along with many of my fellow firefighters, will be receiving a long-awaited substantial raise. We wanna thank you for all the time and resources that have gone into the compensation and class study, and we look forward to the implementation in July. We are hopeful the increase to our, pay, to our pay slows attrition and helps us capture top talent in our recruiting efforts moving forward. One monumental improvement of the new pay plan is that the number of firefighters earning below the Durham livable wage on an hourly basis will drop drastically. Today, we have over 100 firefighters, myself included, earning below the Durham livable wage on an hourly basis. But after July, that number will drop to just 31 firefighters. We wanna see that number go to zero and you will continue to hear from us on this topic, but it is an incredible improvement. It has been very heartening to see our pay be a top priority of our city's leadership this year, and we wanna thank you so much for all of the time that each of you have taken to meet with us and listen to our reps this year. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor, members of council. My name is Nathan Lee. Um, I wanted to just say thank you for uh, investing in the, or modifying our Vision Zero resolution to have an actual date attached to it so that we can hopefully apply for federal funding and have an actual Vision Zero policy and in saying, instead of just something that says, it would be nice if people stop dying on our roads. Um, I wanna thank you for maintaining fare free transit for another year and thank you for funding the Transportation Department's full slate of CIP requests and ask that you continue to try to expedite project delivery. We have a number of projects that have been in planning and design phases for five to 20 years, and still no shovels have touched the earth. 
and I want to, I found died. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> As uh, Ms. Adams is coming up, I felt Hurley, um, John Talmadge, Alexa, Alexis Krilo, Wilma, Wil, Wilma Oliver, and David Bradway. Um, Stella Adams, Durham resident, and yes, I support the tax increase that will fund this budget. Um, first, I want to say that I support the um, city manager's budget, but it's a yes and. Um, the increase, my son-in-law lives in a city that is the same size as Durham with a similar cost of living and similar wages, and he makes almost twice what the city um, firefighters make. Um, this increase, um, there should be no city employee making below the minimum city wage. That doesn't make sense. It's not a minimum wage if there are 31 firefighters who are below it after the compensation plan, and there are numerous other city employees who are under it. I did, uh, I looked at the city's job openings. There were 105 openings, and 75 of those 105 were below 60% of median. The firefighter starting job was at 48% of the median income. It is imperative that we not only talk about increasing the wages, but we also have to increase affordable housing. We have to increase funding to fight evictions. We have to make sure that Durham is a livable city, safe with Vision Zero, free buses so that people can get to good jobs, but the city has to start with its own employees. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, City Council members. My name is Seth Hurley, and I'm here today as a representative of the Triangle Chapter of the Democratic Socialists of America. Last fiscal year, the city of Durham spent an estimated $78 million on policing. Seth, let me stop you right there. We, we have closed captioning that are physically typing. Need to slow down? <laughs> Last fiscal year, the city of Durham spent an estimated $78 million on policing. In the upcoming fiscal year, Ms. Page is proposing a $4 million increase to this amount. Jose Adan Cruz Ocampo. Levante Biggs, Frank Clark, Kenneth Lee Bailey Jr., Andre Lovato Hutchinson. All five of these men were murdered by the Durham Police Department. All five of these men were BIPOC members of the community. Not one had a gun or any other form of weapon which they had shown the intent of using against the police or any other member of the community. Many, but not all of these men, were experiencing mental health crises when they were shot and killed by DPD officers. The people of Durham cannot and will not forget the permanent damage the police have caused our communities. On the other hand, the continued increase in funding for the police and lust for shot spotters shows us, the people of Durham, that Ms. Page and Mayor Williams, you both seem to have forgotten. Would the proposed $4 million increase in the police budget have saved the life of Jose Adan Cruz Ocampo, who spoke very little English and was shot while surrendering his pocket knife to the police? What about Kenneth Lee Bailey Jr., who was shot while trying to run from the police who were sent to arrest him because he violated a curfew? Ms. Page's bu budget suggests a measly $1 million increase to the Community Safety Department's budget, which manages important resources like the HARP program and crisis call diversion. Would this have been enough to save the lives of Levante Biggs, Frank Clark, and Andre Lovato Hutchinson, all of whom were experiencing mental health crises when they were murdered by DPD officers? Is an extra million dollars enough to help all those in Durham still affected by suicide, homelessness, intimate partner violence, and drug abuse? The answer to all these questions is resounding no. So why are the police getting $82 million next year when the Community Safety Department gets only seven and a half? Thank you for your time. Welcome, Mr. Talmadge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, council members, 
Madam Manager, I'm John Talmadge, Durham resident and executive director of Bike Durham. Traffic deaths are one of the public health crises that face our community, and we are so appreciative that this council, this manager, this staff understands that and, and takes it seriously, as is evident in this budget uh, and in, in last year's budget. Uh, with the Vision Zero resolution, the funding for the capital projects and the uh, traffic calming projects, the uh, sidewalk and streets bond referendum, those are clear indications that you take this seriously. And the other thing that I'm encouraged by is the conversation, uh, the acknowledgement that this is not spend the money this year and move on to other issues, that this is year in and year out infrastructure investments that need to be made until we have safe streets for everybody. I also appreciate the inclusion of fare free transit and the effort to continue to make, keep that fare, uh, that the fares affordable for everybody, even if that means free uh, into the future. Uh, I urge you to approve this budget and the CIP and to work with staff to continuously improve the city's processes for project delivery to expedite them um, so that we can get to Vision Zero by that 2045 date that you've set. Thank you. Good evening. Can everybody see me? Um, so my name is Wilma Oliver. I have the privilege of wearing that flag on my uniform every day that I come to work. But I'm not speaking as an employee tonight. I'm speaking as a citizen of Durham. I'm heartbroken when I hear disparaging remarks about our Durham Police Department. Because these Durham Police Department folks, they show up, they're very kind, they are experiencing unbelievable things in this city. We sometimes have people that are squatters, sometimes people that are going through mental health crises. But also the city of Durham has a policy, see something, say something. We don't sweep stuff under the rug. And then I think about our firefighters who put their life on the line every single day. A dear friend of mine was diagnosed with a cancer that firefighters are at a higher risk of getting, even though they have that PPE equipment, they are at a higher risk of getting it. But I'm also speaking on behalf of my coworkers who I consider second responders. We are the code enforcement officers that are going out there and looking at properties after there's a fire and also meeting with the people who are living in substandard housing to try to work with the landlord and say, hey, fix this so they can actually have plumbing, have heat during the winter. And so understand that when you have an employee that loves what they do like I do and so many of my coworkers, we are very valuable to this community. And so what everyone's saying is, I know this is tough, guys. You guys have heard some excellent programs to invest in, but who do you want answering that call for help? Thank you. Welcome. Hi, everyone. I'm Alexis Greco. Um, I live downtown on Mangum Street, um, and I want the streets of Durham to be safe for everyone. If you have ever relied on a bike or your feet or the bus to get to work or school, you understand what it's like to be really scared when you're crossing the street and people are driving 55, 60 miles an hour. <laughs> Um, it's unacceptable that people are dying um, on their way to enjoy time with their families, on their way to do their jobs. Um, and I appreciate the work you all are doing to invest in ways to stop that. Um, so thank you for taking this issue seriously and I hope to see you continue doing that in the future. Thank you.
Hello, I'm David Bradway. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and City Council for giving us the opportunity to speak. I thank you for addressing in the budget some of the highest needs that were identified in the satisfaction survey and in the listening sessions around the budget. I'm grateful that the budget and your actions over the last year have prioritized safe streets, safe transit, and safe transportation. To achieve a fully safe, connected network, I hope that you all continue to build better working relationships with Duke University and Medical Center, with NCDOT, and with North Carolina Railroads, because even if we get to zero deaths and injuries on the, the city-controlled streets, that isn't going to get us all the way there. And for us to be able to use these other methods of getting around, we need connections inside, outside of campus, across the freeways, across the railroads. And um, I also agree with Mayor Williams and a lot of what's heard tonight that more needs to be done on gun violence and a lot of the other issues that were raised tonight. And I'm hopeful that the parks bond, the increase in pay, and you know, future city budgets can better incorporate some of those needs that we heard about. And I just want to thank you for all of the work that you do on council. Most of the meetings I listen to on YouTube at 1.25x speed, so hearing you at live and in person is a, a nice calm way to do it. Um, so I think I've got the last word here, so um, thank you for this budget process. Thank you. All right, those are all of the cards that I have. Um, still making good time. Uh, all right, we are, um, those are all the cards I have, so at this time I'm going to declare the public hearing closed and back before the council. And let me get my agenda back up here. Okay, gotcha. All right, so, um, this concludes our um, public hearing on the budget. And at this time, uh, colleagues, I will uh, entertain, I'll start the motion if there's any discussion. Well, not really discussion, this was a hearing. But I'll go ahead and um, entertain a motion. No, there's a motion, is it? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Some of the things going on in my head right now. All right. so. I believe that is it. I owe Councilmember Caballero something. And, uh, did they sign up? No. All right. So I believe that's everything, right? I'm hesitant on ending the meeting because I feel like I'm missing something, but I believe that's it. <laughs> All right. Um, with colleagues, and uh, that is everything. We, I am so confused. All right, I can't <laughs> believe that this is, it's like it's too real to be true. <laughs> we are going to adjourn at 8.41 p.m. Thank you, Mr. <laughs>